about to travel across the country to my family home and there is no Amiga over there. So I'm going to need an Amiga there because I want to create my music on Octomed and yeah, basically I need an Amiga over there. <laughs> so I'm going to go on a little journey before I set off on the big journey to make one of my Amiga 600s be portable. PCBWay are an electronics PCB prototyping company who deal with many different types of PCBs, such as flexible, rigid flex, multi-layer and HDI types. You can choose from many different types of PCBs, whether it's a standard, inexpensive for simple projects or an advanced complex PCB for your more high precision electronics projects. They are a one-stop solution since they also deal with 3D printing, injection molding, sheet metal fabrication and CNC machining. Your personal projects can be shared on their website and there is a PCB projects on the week section with many videos. Now first things first, power. And that's what we're going to concentrate on today. The next um, videos I'll concentrate on the other aspects of it. So let's open this out. I know there's going to be a couple of things that need soldering here. And one of them is this which on my other Amiga 600 as well, they're just forever needing soldering. So I'm gonna stick some hot glue there. Uh, it has its uses. <laughs> now, thankfully in the past, I already removed the RF modulator from this, but this time I wanna also remove the squared in socket because I wanna make this Amiga be a USB-C powered Amiga. Now, before I do something permanent, like remove the square din, I want to test first. Now, in my Amiga Tower series, when I was um, sorting out the power solution, the second video, I'll link it below. Now, in my Amiga 1200 Tower, the power solution, which I did, the PSU solution, I used a Pico, Pico, PSU. <laughs> and, uh, well, it's not really Pico, it, Pico's just the brand of one of them. So, what I'm going to do in this one, I'm going to use a similar thing, another Pico, yeah, Pico, it bugs me. It's a DC to DC to ADX power supply. So about another one exactly the same, yeah, because it worked so well. So you put in 12 volts, yeah, and out come all the Amiga voltages from here. Well, you do when you plug in here. So I'm just using this, this is actually from the Amiga 1200, um, Tower, but I'm just using it just for testing here. I've got myself some of these, yeah? This is very simple, by the way. Now these, it's a five pack I got, so all these are the same. So basically looking at this, yes, it's that tiddly. Okay, so in goes your USB-C power. And then on the output side, you have so small this is hard to focus it right on the other end of it you have 12 volts coming out and this can supply according to its spec 5 amps of power 5 amps is going to be more than enough i mean if you think about it 12 volts at 5 amps we'll say around 60 watts and you know the amiga let's think about it last time when we measured the um the current draw with using the bench uh, power supply it was under one amp for the amiga 500 that is okay first things first before you do the exciting stuff let's sort our friend over here this should be 12 volts Five volts. Why is that five volts? It said twelve volts. Oh. It's marked as twelve volts. So this should be outputting twelve volts. Mm -hmm. Okay, so not all power supplies are compatible with this. So the ones that are not, it will just supply five volts. But the ones that are, it does actually, like this one which I use for my laptop, this one will actually, oops, supply 
12 volts. Which is exactly what we need. Okay, perfect. So they do work. Just need a, the right power supply, which, you know, makes sense because the Amiga is going to take more wattage than you'd expect from these. Perfect, that's sorted. Okay, let's just cut this adapter off. We can use that for another project. Okay. I mean, this is a straightforward installation, really, but it is fiddly and installing it inside the Amiga and modifying it. Though, to be honest, the Power Shark is a much cleaner and neater solution, requiring no removing of parts nor drilling the Amiga's case to install a switch. I would have preferred it, but two things that stop me. Availability and price. It feels a bit hefty to get this for each of my Amigas. Also, I have no experience of actually using it. So if any of you have, please let me know in the comments how you're finding it long-term use, especially if you have accelerators and other peripherals. So soldered this onto this board. Just need to plug the power in and test. Okay, moment of truth. And it works. And it's only pulling 10 watts. And that's an Amiga 500. Well, 10 watts, but I'm sure if I put the disc in, it'd be 11 watts. 12 watts. And it seems to be working perfectly. There you go. USB-C powered Amiga. <laughs> now to build it in. And I'm just using a um, laptop or a generic, basically, um, laptop USB power supply. But I'm sure you don't even need that. As long as the... Um, it's a, uh, I think it's... Uh, I don't know how USB-C exactly works, yeah. I know there's different voltages involved and I know different um, USB adapters and chargers accept different ones. So maybe quick charging, fast charging adapters, I don't know, but as long as it uh, is able to provide 12 volts, it's fine. I mean, it's not heating or anything. It's fine. Maybe it's because it's switched to thingy. I thought this was going to be a boost converter this thing. And I thought it was going to get really hot, so I thought I'm going to need a heatsink, but no, that's not the case. It's working absolutely beautifully, so I'm excited. Now is the time to start modding my Amiga 600 and removing that squared in, which is going to be fun. Okay, so this one goes back into my Amiga 1200 iTech tower. And you, my friend, my amigo, thank you so much for your help. Okay, so connected to my little Amiga 600. It does turn on. I'm guessing it's just the kickstart that's waiting for the disc. There we go. One step away to having a portable Amiga. <laughs> portable in the sense of I can carry it around anywhere, connect it to a screen, connect, you know, USB power, USB-C power to it, and, you know, just get going with whatever I want to do. Perfect. Okay, let's get started now. Um, Yeah, nothing's getting warm. Nothing at all is getting warm. Now this is where I'm really happy that the Amiga 600 actually exists. And in this form factor, in this um, small... My only criticism was, is that it's basically, other than having a PCMCIA slot and new um, component style, like surface mount. It's, it's pretty much identical to spec to the 500. I mean, they could have increased the um, 
the CPU or even improved on Polar. Might it be nice to have a 6802 processor in this, right? It doesn't have to be AGA as long as it's the processor is up and the memory as well. Two megabyte uh, chip instead of uh, one. I mean, the 1200 finally came out. Then, yeah. Or 30 at least. I don't know what Commodore was playing at. I was never the biggest fan of how they were. Not the um, engineers, mind you. I just didn't like the CEOs of these companies. Because they didn't have a clue. Poor engineers are the ones who did all the running around. one on the motherboard, the pinout wise, but I think this thing is gonna help me. It's gonna be really useful to be honest. So if we just plug in the the DIN socket, the square DIN socket, and continue with the test from here to there, we can you know identify the, the pins and the voltages. It's just you know me. I'm very pedantic when it comes to this. So it's gonna be that. Okay, so that's the uh, negative 12 volt line sorted. Plus 12 volts. That is this one, top one in the corner there. connected plus 12 volts here the yellow negative 12 volts is the blue at the bottom here that's plus 5 volts the red and ground black it's all installed final test yeah at first I connected everything, connected the USB uh, power source, turned it on and nothing happened and I quickly turned it off because I got freaking scared thinking that <laughs> maybe I've connected it wrong. But no, actually what it is, is that, and what I forgot, <laughs> is that with ATX, it's that PS on pin. You have to connect it to ground, which is, you know, that one there. So once that was connected, you know, the signal to uh, make the, the actual PSU turn on then it was fine <laughs> it was perfectly fine now all I need to do is deal with the physical stuff and that is to stick this on here because it's gonna go above like that so I'm gonna find a way to kind of with this with the actual um, USB socket I'm gonna use a millipad and stick it there where the um, so this bit is so let's get some millipad mixed nice blue one oh, the cat's calling me create a thing A 
Okay, so next morning, and I can confirm that the millipad has now hardened. <laughs> and uh, hopefully that's now all in place. Let's do a little bit of tidy up before I show you, because I'm really excited about this. So you can see here, this is now rock solid and smooth. USB-C port, and we also have a really nice switch here. It's just so much easier and so much cleaner. And now that's the power brick of the Amiga. Now, next week, I'm gonna move on to the next stage of making this a portable Amiga. Special thank you to my top tier patrons Rich Garbutt, Axel Dominator, Jason Marison, Corey Ostman, Mark Bosak, and Monochrome Minako. Thank you all so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm.